introduce yourself and then um, tell us why you enrolled in the 99 Discipleship Workshop. Well, my name is John Swear, and uh, recently had occasion to um, do a study of the Mass in our uh, small group Bible study group. And as, as part of that study, learned that the word Mass itself, which we use all the time to describe the entire liturgy that we do at church, actually falls out of the very end of what we call the Mass namely the uh, uh, out of the dismissal portion. And the, the root of the, the word mass actually comes from Latin uh, missio, which of course means dismissal. This, but not just dismissal, there's a connotation that we're being dismissed, but with a mission. And the mission of course is to now carry out the the gospel of Jesus, you know, to the world, to those who have not yet heard it, to those around us. And with that background, when I heard about the uh, the 99 program being uh, soon offered, uh, which I attended uh, back uh, last year during the Advent session. Your that retreat, the 99 retreat? Yes, the yeah. 99 retreat, thank you. Um, I, I thought this this is an opportunity for me to really learn some of the nuances and fine points uh, of um, uh, discipleship, evangelization, and how best to most optimally uh, bring bring the word out to those about me. And so that's actually what brought me to the retreat. Uh, I, I did, in fact, learn a tremendous number of wonderful things that are so useful, and um, and that's that's where I'm at currently. Okay. I sort of felt like. And what's your name? <clears throat> oh, my name's Chuck Wright. Um, I'm new to the parish. I I sort of felt like I needed to expand my ability to communicate my faith. And I too have always heard the great commission, if you will, to go out and make disciples of, but never felt like I had the tools. So the tools are there, but you're always hesitant on whether they're, the knowledge that you share, your faith that you share, doesn't get home. So I was hoping through this that those tools would come to me. And I think it's something that we're all called to do. It's a matter of whether we're listening mm -hmm. or not. So um, I look to put a few more tools in my toolbox. And I think it really did accomplish that. That's great. So how did the material in the workshop impact your understanding of evangelization and discipleship? Well, I'm a retired scientist, and as part of my uh, uh, vocation over the years, you know, I've done a lot of teaching, informal teaching, and I recognize the the value of that and the need for it. And um, but uh, it wasn't really until I uh, retired and became a student of the Bible, as I call it really got into the word in a serious manner that I started realizing that uh, uh, you know there's there's more that I need to do and and uh, and, and can do uh, but the trick first uh, as I have discovered and also had reinforced during the 99 discipleship program is that one has to prepare oneself to a certain degree. One needs to have an intimate relationship uh, with Jesus, you know, first. And there's an old adage that I use a lot, and I, I believe it's very true that, um, you know, you, you can't give something that you ain't got, mm -hmm. as they say. And uh, once one, uh, develops an intimate relationship and and you start feeling that love and the joy and the peace in your own life 
there's, there's something very special that um, I think happens to most people, and that is you, you start wanting to share that with other people because you start thinking about and looking around, even within your own family, which, which I have done, and see the needs even right there in some cases. And you don't have to look too far beyond that to see many other cases as well. And uh, so this program, uh, I think, gave me the tools, uh, the understanding that uh, evangelization and discipleship is not a matter of standing on a street corner and preaching, um, but rather uh, it's, it's uh, to a large degree about uh, listening, forming friendships, strong relationships with people, get to the point where they trust you because as the program taught us, uh, people don't really care what you know until they know that you care. That really hit me hard. Uh, that and that we're not just supposed to be uh, uh, keepers of the, uh, the <laughs> of the aquarium, <laughs> but, but also uh, fishers of men and women also. So that's, uh, uh, so many tools have uh, flown from this program for me that are so useful. That's great. I think when you think of discipleship, you think of a very large opportunity around you. I think the basis is just in the people that you encounter. Um, like you said, family, um, those that are closest to your sphere of living. And if that, if you can take care of family in your closest sphere, sphere, then you can reach out from there. So, and your family knows you so well, so it's mm -hmm. hard to get past some of the, the thought process that they already have established about who you are and what you do. Mm -hmm. So um, that is that is the challenge that we all face. So, and it's really about just tell your story, okay? You have lots of experiences in your life mm -hmm. and you have things where God has touched you. Mm -hmm. And when you give enough contemplative, is that the right word, thought to what your experiences are when God has touched you, you probably have a quite a repertoire of mm -hmm. things that you could share with somebody if you take the time to think about all those things. And I think that's one of the things I got. And it's not a daunting task. It's not a quick task either, but in God's time, mm -hmm. he'll teach you what you need to say. And this is one of the first steps that you can take. Mm -hmm. And you know, Chuck, I uh, kind of dovetailing off of what you've said, I, uh, I think part of the uh, difficulty in uh, dealing with our own family is they know we're not perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, but but I think we can use them. Yeah, well, other than you, of course. <laughs> but, but I think we can use that to our advantage mm -hmm. because uh, I think it's fair to say that most of us uh, have been that lost sheep ourselves mm -hmm. at one time, at least in some ways. And um, and it's it's important that uh, people realize that uh, that that happens, and it's it's part of life. And most people experience that, I dare say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, we may be part of the ninety nine now, but it took a lot of a lot of stuff, and a lot of Jesus, and a lot of relationship with him, uh, you know, to likely bring us to that point. And I think if we approach it, you know, in that humble way, but truthful and bold uh, manner, uh, I, I think we can leverage that uh, oftentimes into some good things. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And I think we all have stories where that has been successful and we have stories where that has not been successful. Mm -hmm. and, uh, exactly. and just you have to have courage to just speak out of love and humility. And, then, and that's a hard thing to do when you're not humble 
<laughs> okay, but it doesn't. If it, you don't do it in humility and love, then mm -hmm. then it becomes confrontational. Mm -hmm. So you got to put that those tools away and bring in the humility Absolutely. when you're speaking. So, having gone through it, do you have some examples of some of the changes that, uh, like a story of an encounter with someone that might have been different than before, or just mm -hmm. things you do differently in your life with having gone through the workshop? Yeah, I've become, um, because of the, the workshop, I've become a lot more intentional now. and. Um, you know, like so many people, I've fallen in love with texting. It's so easy and it's so convenient and and it's so easy to then lose touch with people even by not calling them, much less the face-to-face -face, uh, get-togethers. And, and that had happened to me to a large degree. And because of this workshop, I have intentionally uh, first be, begun calling people with the intention of setting up times to meet with them, mm -hmm. you know, for brunch or whatever, and uh, had dinners with people, quite quite a f number of people already. Ones that uh, I, I had some concerns about, some questions, wondered how they were doing really, and, uh, and was, as it turned out, pleasantly surprised that uh, things were better than I thought maybe they had been but it was so reassuring to, to see that and, and, uh, and to kind of, you know, realize that, well, we can move on to other people on the list because, you know, there, there's no shortage of people, um, at least in, in my realm, that uh, I think, uh, <clears throat> you know, wouldn't benefit from a little extra face time. Mm -hmm. so. It's so like we were talking before, being here, being able to talk to each other, we communicate so much better. Mm -hmm. And you're right, the texting is somewhat cold, but at least it reaches out and says, I'm still here. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm wondering what's going on. So um, at least it gives you an opportunity. But that face-to-face -face really makes, makes a big difference, mm -hmm. and I think we need to really get back to that. Mm -hmm. And then the next step is, you get a feeling for whether you can bring your faith up. Is it a is it a difficult thing to transition to? I would say that we'd all think yes, it's always a difficult transition. But without that face to face understanding, um, the dynamics where um, where they're at, then you have an opportunity, and it doesn't have to be anything large. It's just starting a conversation. So starting the conversation about where you are in your in your journey with Christ. Mm -hmm. So um, you don't have to prepare. You don't have to know. Um, in time, that will blossom too, because mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit's with you. And in times when you need it, He'll be there for you. Mm -hmm. Great. So. <clears throat> If someone was considering going through the 99 Discipleship Workshop, why, what would you, like, why should they go through it? What is, um, how, if they asked, how would this impact me? What would you, what would your response be? Well, when we look at the gospel, uh, one really realizes that the end game is, in fact, uh, bringing the good news to other people, mm -hmm. you know, first to ourselves. You know, mm -hmm. we have to. Matter of fact, <laughs> I've always found it interesting uh, thinking that you know, if everybody in the world actually just concentrated on getting themselves saved, there'd be no need for evangelization or <laughs> discipleship. But isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. It always struck me. Uh, but obviously, we don't live in a perfect world, and so. There's people out there, and I was one of them at one time too, that needed other people's help in that regard. And, and we still all need help in many ways. Mm -hmm. that's, the, that's the beauty of community and church and uh, uh, small groups, Bible study groups and fellowship groups of all sorts. But, um, <clears throat> uh, but, uh, 
lost my train of thought here. Just what advice you would give to someone if they were interested in possibly doing the workshop? There, there's so many good suggestions and really down to earth practical tips that come out of this course that um, it, it would benefit anyone, I would say, uh, who is really serious and ready now to actually, um, uh, you know, take discipleship out to the world as, as Jesus really commanded us to do and ultimately, you know, baptizing people in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. It, it was his last command to us really in the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew 28, right at the end, right before he ascended back into heaven. And um, I have to believe that, uh, you know, he meant what he said because he wouldn't have wasted his words on something that was superfluous right before he was about to leave. And we can just look around all of us, what's going on in our own society now, mm -hmm. our culture, and there are just seem to be so many lost people, mm -hmm. you know, and they're confused people, depressed people, anxious people, some who are searching, some that don't know what to do, and they're just, they're just without hope almost, mm -hmm. and obviously suicide rates in different age classes uh, support that too, so it's, mm -hmm. there's such a need, mm -hmm. so. I, th I think to the extent we can arm ourselves with as many tools as possible, as Chuck said earlier, uh, which one gets in this mm -hmm. discipleship course, uh, we're that much to the better mm -hmm. in order to do what we need to do. What came to my mind as I was listening was um, you don't have to be an expert. I think he shared in the parable of sowing of the seeds that the seeds need to be sowed and when you think about it it's in those days they sowed the seeds by throwing right and seeds have to die and then pr produce fruit I, th I think this the simple thing is there needs to be a sower and being a, a disciple is is that metaphor that you just need to share your interpretation of your faith in small doses with a personal background that reinforces that and then that in and of itself if it takes hold mm -hmm. will be in their minds I know that because that's how I came to the Catholic Church, okay? It was the people around me mm -hmm. sharing on little things on a daily basis that had me thinking, I want a little bit of that. Mm -hmm. So it's not a difficult task to sew. Mm -hmm. So, and this, this also helps you understand with your own reflections on your personal level. It's not a book study. Yeah. It's a reflection study. And I, I it's it's not difficult. But you have to go. Yeah. You have to step forward. I think a lot of people think it's up to staff and the priest and yes. they just show up, you know, that's their job, but that we have You're to You're the keeper of the aquarium. Yeah. <laughs> but we have to remember that we all have a call to evangelization and discipleship that's all of our calls not just and you are unique to where you are right now yeah and you are called at this point in time it's not a mistake right so um, learning to share learning the tools and the ripple impact that can have uh, you know I don't think you even understand we all understand what the ripple effect yeah, is no. it's a pebble in there mm -hmm. and the ripples go and that's the Holy Spirit and, moving and you may never know mm -mm. but if you didn't speak up in the grocery line or um, be patient mm -hmm. at another store 
you don't know how you affect the world around you. Exactly. So you need to, we all need to learn those simple tools. We all have our stories and mm -hmm. others, uh, maybe in situations where our story really just hits home for them too. Mm -hmm. uh, even though we, our stories are unique to various degrees, uh, there's still overlap and uh, you know we don't live on an island and uh, so to share ourself in that manner I think is very powerful and I think people realize that you know they're really listening to you know truth what, what's actually happened in a person's life it mm -hmm. uh, can be of great sig significance uh, to them as well mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so the last question which we you might not have much more to add, but just what was maybe one thing you learned that impacted you the most from what we learned? I, I think in addition to the need for um, intimacy ourselves with Jesus, it has to start there. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, as I see it now, we need to have a really strong and ongoing, increasing relationship with the Lord, you know, to tap into his love and peace and joy. And we're supposed to be joyful people, and that's, you know, we're supposed to be able to, uh, you know, with gladness, mm -hmm. you know, express what we have found in, in Jesus. And I think that's the starting point. But then beyond that, uh, what struck me is the great importance of just befriending people and having then a relationship with them mm -hmm. and you know not trying to start off with preaching and teaching and the hard you know doctrine certainly but rather to meet them where they are no matter where they are and uh, just as St. Paul did um, you know in Athens mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know find out where you can start mm -hmm. and do a lot of listening mm -hmm. and not necessarily perhaps even any talking just listen mm -hmm. listen and learn and little by little uh, love these people uh, show that you're really genuinely concerned about them and there'll be time later mm -hmm. uh, you know for other things and as Chuck was saying look for opportunities just to sprinkle a few seeds mm -hmm. you know along the way and let the Holy Spirit uh, pick it up from there I think I could produce a plethora of people who would say huh. listening is a difficult task mm -hmm. for me so um, talking is not <laughs> so it's <clears throat> It's a it's a it's a skill they need to to hone and listening in a somewhat spiritual way says that I care. Right? You don't have to say, I care about you, John, but if I listen to you and then say back what you told me and it hits home that I was listening. I don't have to say anymore. Even a Deacon loves for that says listening feels like love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's not hard. It's 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 hard, but it's not hard. But unless you're intentional and have some some tools to remind you of how to do it, mm -hmm. it tends to be something that you let slip out of okay. your tool belt, like I do. <laughs> alluded to earlier. Yep, I've lost my tool belt many times. Yes, yes, and, and nothing in the tool belt anymore, <laughs> except a hammer. I mean, I'm pretty good at keeping the hammer. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to share your experience. Yeah, thank You're you very welcome. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. My pleasure.